I love making things for Christmas. I get very excited. I don't always hit the deadlines, but I really love the process. And I think there are lots of crafters like me. There are also lots of crafters who resent deeply making things for Christmas. <laughs> so they get very cross and they refuse to do it. And welcome to the Yarn Over podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Jane. And in this week's episode, we're going to be talking to the hosts of the Lovecraft Show. I'm pleased to welcome Jamie and Miriam from the Lovecraft Show. We're going to be talking about all sorts of things in this week's episodes. We talk about crafting through the seasons, Christmas crafting, and also randomly mermaids. So grab a cup of tea and your crochet hook, and let's get into this week's episode. I wanted to take a moment to introduce my brand new book, You Can Crochet with Bella Coco. This is a clear and simple course for the beginner and contains everything that you need to get started as an absolute beginner. It also serves as a handy reference guide for those who just want a quick catch up to brush upon their techniques. And it contains 12 gorgeous crochet patterns for you to complete. You Can Crochet with Bella Coco is available now. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Yarn Over podcast. Today I am joined by the hosts of the Lovecraft show. Uh, so please welcome Marion and Jamie to this new podcast. We're going to be talking about the feeling that this is going to go a few different ways. How about you? <laughs> I, think, I think there's always an air, sort of an air of unpredictability with us. So yes, yes, <laughs> like it, yeah. we've, we've already had fun and games off camera. Um, but first of all, would you like to introduce yourselves to everybody who might not know who you are? You go, Should I go first, Jamie? Oh. So my name is Marion. I am one of the editors at Love Crafts, and uh, you know, sort of world of glorious crafting, um, great global home for makers. I always say that because we we love our makers all over the world. And Jamie and I, um, we started uh, a couple of years ago creating and recording a podcast called the Love Craft Show, and um, we each bring something unique to the show. <laughs> And we've had a lovely time talking to some incredible people, haven't we, Jamie? We have, yeah. So my name's Jamie. I'm known as Mr. X Stitch. And like now it's like nearly 20 years since I started cross stitching as a grown up. But I am on a mission to change the way the world thinks about needlework. So I have a quarterly digital cross stitch magazine called X Stitch, which comes out, which is like modern cross stitch, you know. So while there is a time and a place for all the cute stuff, mine's a bit sort of edgier than that. And generally, I just try and curate things and show people that the world of needlework is exciting and diverse and cool and all of those sorts of things. And somehow, yeah, I've managed to make a living out of that. And yeah, me and Marion co-host the Lovecraft Show, which is one of the best crafting podcasts around, present company excluded. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and we just talk to random people about crafts because if there's one thing that we've learned, it's like crafts that just change your life in so many ways that you can't quite put your finger on it. And yeah. A bit of a laugh. Yeah. And I've been one of those random people. You were one of them. <laughs> you were our second guest. Yeah. You oh, were. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Back in the wow. days when we could all meet in person and stuff as well. Yeah. Like me and Marion haven't met for like two years now. We don't. Yeah, we COVID like. days. Yes. Yeah, and we but, watched um, we watched your uh, our video with you recently to remind ourselves, and we were like, "Oh, look at us all! We're all so young and innocent." <laughs> yeah, Jamie, <laughs> Jamie happened? had hair, didn't you? <laughs> I'd hair. I was interestingly wearing the same t-shirt though. So uh, clearly, my fashion has not moved on in the slightest in two years. It's been marvelous. <laughs> Uh, it was a really fun podcast. I watched it a couple of months ago, actually. And um, I remember us having a conversation about organization and all of that. I was saying that I love my file of faxes and, mm. and that. And then you was like, have you tried this, um, this thing? And I couldn't remember what you'd said. Um, anyway, a few months later, I found Notion, which is online organization and all of that. And then I watched it back. I was like, that's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do you like, use it now? I, I'm not using it currently, but I have used it. I kind of, I'm a bit sporadic with it. So 
I like to use it mainly for like lists. So if I go on mm. holiday, I have a list on there for what I need if if it's myself just going away for the night or if it's the family. And yeah, I, I like to kind of collate lists on there, but I should use it more than I do really. I think we do need to still a use episode it? about this all the time. Notion yeah. underpins everything I do. I've gone down the route of using tools like Zapier so that I can integrate my inbox like my email client with notion and my calendar i'm i'm deep mm -hmm. in it man if notion yeah. breaks my life is over pretty much <laughs> that's how it works so but you can, i can see marion's like i have a pad and a I, <laughs> I have a pen and a piece of paper yeah i mean i am not the most organized person obviously but yeah i can't i can't bring myself to do online organization stuff have you still I'm got hybrid, amazing though. file faxes though yes Yes, yeah, I love it was my a thing of well, few years ago. Yeah, it's um it's a Kiki K that I use, which unfortunately they don't really sell in the UK anymore. Um you can get it from Australia, but obviously that is a bit costly to uh, get it over. But yeah, I love it's my dream to one day have my own like planner range. <gasps> Watch out for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would yeah, absolutely yeah. love it because I just so love it. It's so popular, isn't it? It's just people mm -hmm. love planners and journals. And it's a huge pastime for people as mm -hmm. well as an organisation tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, do you ever see the videos where they're literally like pimping out their their planners where my brother actually started off doing doing that he had adam's philo and his channel was all about his philo facts and how he would decorate it and how would you use it and i'm just like love it i'm here for that <laughs> i have this i have a, a bugbear about creative procrastination which is you'll never like the time when i've got a deadline for the magazine is a time when suddenly i found a new way to organize my life and i'm going to do that instead <laughs> yeah you know you're like wait i should be doing something important right now Somebody should build that into the creative process, I feel, because all creative people have this creative procrastina uh, procrastination, don't they? Mm -hmm. like that sort of, when you grind to a halt, when you know you're supposed to be doing something and you're like, oh, that beautiful squirrel in the garden. I was just going to water mm, the squirrel for a while. <laughs> yeah, you probably should. We should probably be honest with ourselves and know that it's a thing, isn't it? But the, where there's yeah. a deadline, you can't help but want to escape it. So maybe the thing to do is make sure that you've got a useful task as a backup. So at least you yeah. achieve something. Yeah, but when yeah. you're colouring in the the love hearts you've drawn around the edge of your Filofax page, you know that maybe <laughs> you could be making better use of your time. <laughs> yeah, but it it feels so nice to do that. So That's why not? Nice. <laughs> it's thinking, um, um, thinking and processing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think we need to like allow ourselves that time. Can we make that normal? I think we should make that normal. I think we should invent this new section of creativity. I'm sure it'd be very popular. Yeah. Procrastination. <laughs> a, a really, really great sort of wordsmith name for it. So this sort of in-between time where you're processing or yeah. some other some other yeah. Procreation. It's yeah. like processing creation, or is procreation something else? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's an app. <laughs> Procreate. <laughs> Procrastination is what you said uh, before, oh, Jamie. I think that's a, yeah, 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 that is mm. a definite, um, a definite word for it, isn't it? Uh, do you do you have like? Because um, I was thinking about this earlier. You know, throughout the year, do you actually have different crafts that you do throughout the year? Um, I know we've touched on filofax and things like that, which we should count definitely count as a craft. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but is there anything that you find yourself doing? Um, it's currently summer, supposedly, as we speak. Um, do yourself do things summer rather than winter, or how do you find it to be? I think there is a very clear crafting calendar, um, dependent on on weather. In this side of the planet because obviously in Australia things will be different and I think I, I feel that mostly it's it doesn't feel like there's an awful lot of serious woolly knitting but I'm sure there is um but here I think when the winter comes the, the beginning of the winter sort of autumn winter for me is the beginning of sock season as <laughs> Jamie will love but that's when I start knitting my Christmas gift socks um and this year, actually, I'm going to crochet socks because um, 
at Love Course, we're very excited. We've got the fantastic Anna Nikopirovich coming to teach us how to crochet socks. And so I'm I'm absolutely very excited about that. Uh, and I want to have a go at it uh, joyously with Aaron Waite yarn because I can't use very fine yarn because it really hurts my hands. But so socks in the autumn coming up and, and the beginning of chunky jumpers. So I think we start sort of knitting and crocheting really hefty yarns when the weather gets colder and blankets. Uh, yeah. And then, so you go through that sort of gift knitting with a short break for knitting something horrible for Halloween or crocheting a pumpkin. <laughs> yes yeah then you go through winter where it could be you know after christmas you then have a little relax because you're so sick of making presents then you make something for you then you sort of carry on the tailing end until you get to spring and then cotton appears yeah and then that's the point i think where we all start making things with cotton yarn i think jamie's yeah. looking blank here don't worry about me don't worry about me we'll get to me later <laughs> and, um, and so then I think we start doing shawls and cotton things and accessories. And then when we get into the sort of middle of summer, then it sort of turns into village fate things. So then you start making jam jar covers and, and things like that. Uh, <laughs> and probably doing a bit of sewing. Where do you, do you, sorry, do you live in the 1950s? Where do you live? <laughs> village fate things where does that come from well because of the school fairs jamie and we get, i know to be honest i do know what you're on about because i'm hidden in that territory myself but, and also for our metropolitan like, friends yes but also things like jam jar covers and suddenly things become very important to you like when you get save all your jam jars or little jars to put tea lights in to hang off the side of a tree and therefore that has to have some crochet around it things that you would never <laughs> think of at any other time of the year suddenly you want to hang tea lights in trees um and then i think then you sort of as you come into the the end of summer then you possibly start cushions i think maybe that could be your gateway to heavier yarns sniggering in the back there what do you do I, love, then? I wish I lived in Marion's world. I don't know what world it is, but it sounds bloody comfortable, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> I love it. So I love that different. little timeline. Mine's different. I think, I mean, is that something that you, you ascribe to? Because obviously you're deep in the crochet as well. Is what Marion's saying, does that ring true for you? Um, honestly, no. <laughs> yes. No, not for me personally. Um, I don't find that I have a huge amount of time to do like personal projects um, at the moment, just because of, you know, the season of life I'm in with two young kids and you're trying to get work in. Like it's the that time is very <laughs> narrow. Um, but I will find myself more so going like changing my yarn rather than changing my projects. But I do feel very inspired. I have to say by that little timeline, I'm like, hmm. The thing is, you, two, you, some... you two both Mary. have very small children. You see, I I've gone through that, so I do have a bit more time. I'm not worried yeah. about. You're like time. a blazing beacon of hope, whereas me and <laughs> SJ are like, what's going on? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Because <laughs> so when we did the, when we did the podcast, we both had a two year old who I'm guessing. So now we've both got a five year old, right? And yeah, then I've got a three year old. Yeah, and I've wow. got a three year old, and you've got a uh, how old's your other? Fifteen baby? month old. Yeah. Congratulations! Yeah. I love that. Thank age. you. I love that age. I think they're so cute. Yeah, so she cute. is so Between cute. One and two is just the best. Yeah. So for me, absolutely. my year goes, what are the kids doing right now? <laughs> Do I have to tell them off? That appears to be my year, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the whole thing all the way through. Because the, the thing with me is there's always an irony in that what I do isn't, I don't make much because I make a magazine and those sorts of things, you know. So I don't get a lot of time for doing much stitching for pleasure anymore Yeah. in the way that I used to. And then I think quite rightly, the kids take a precedent. So if I do stuff, it will be crafting with them or a bit of baking or, you know, like, so I'm in the springtime, they'll be planting things in the garden and making the most of that. And certainly as we move towards the winter time, I can see there is a need for the kind of Christmassy things. But if I speak as a more general stitcher, I know that now is the time when a lot of stitches should be stitching for Christmas because mm -hmm. it takes time, good project management says start early. So you're always thinking about five months ahead of whatever's coming in order to make sure that you're stitching the right things at the right times. But for this guy, I've got two cross stitches that are gathering dust by the side of the sofa 
And every now and again, when Love Island hasn't got me completely gripped, then I'll pick up a needle and thread and have a go at it. <laughs> You're into Love Island, are you? <laughs> not prepared to say whether I am or not. <laughs> I'll allude to it. I dip in and out of it. I don't actually watch Love Island, but I do follow somebody on Instagram who always comments on Love Island, and I just love watching his stories. <laughs> so I live it through him. <laughs> It's like a meditation, the thing. I think that's what I enjoy about stitching is it's like a meditation. And if you combine stitching with Love Island, you really don't use your brain in the slightest. So it allows yeah. your soul to run free. Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, we've mentioned the, the word Christmas a few times there, haven't we? Mm. Do you have anything currently that you're working on for Christmas? Or even can you think of any... Can you predict any Christmas trends that might be coming up? Well, this year, I, I'll just reach over and show you the um, the beginning of my Christmas waffle stitch blanket, uh, which I started yesterday. Actually, last night when I was watching the end of something, and I suddenly I did. I, I've actually ended up with two rows which used a whole hundred gram ball of oh, chunky wow. yarn, and I thought maybe this is a bit too wide. This is going to take me a long time. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I thought I would start making a blanket now because it, Christmas in July is a thing. You know, it's a thing in the States. And mm -hmm. at Lovecrafts, we talk about it and most people grumble and, and complain. But the harsh reality is that if you want to, like Jamie says, if you want to make something in time for Christmas, you have to start early. Mm -hmm. And so we always say start the big things really early. And then, you know, as you get closer to Christmas, then you can start the smaller things so that you're making decorations on Christmas Eve. <laughs> yeah. um, With a sense uh, of joy, the joy of Christmas being that you've done all the Christmas work already, right? So well, you're like, oh, I'm free to enjoy it. <laughs> there are two camps, aren't there? Like, I love making things for Christmas. I get very excited. I don't always hit the deadlines, but I really love the process. And I think there are lots of crafters like me. There are also lots of crafters who resent deeply making things for Christmas. <laughs> They get very cross and they refuse to do it. And so that's fine. And then after Christmas, they go, oh, I wish I'd made a blanket. I'm not saying anything at that point. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just Stop. remembering a soundbite that we had, Mary, where you call me a Christmas Grinch. And we used to use that for quite a lot of videos. Just <laughs> that. That's because you complain about Christmas. Have you seen my brand new pattern, the patchwork blanket? This project is perfect if you want to use up some of your yarn in your stash, explore new stitches and techniques, and also learn new skills. So many people have picked up this pattern already and begun their projects. And if you want to too, you can head across to bellacococrochet.com forward slash patchwork hyphen blanket. That's bellacococrochet.com forward slash patchwork hyphen blanket blanket. Sarah Jane, are you, do you love Christmas? I do love Christmas. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have so many plans in my head for Christmas and I probably get maybe one of those things. Done. <laughs> I'm like, which is where it comes around so quickly. That is the thing. Um, so yeah, I, I always have these grand plans of what I can do for Christmas. Um, and rarely do those things actually happen <laughs> in terms of making. <laughs> One I thing I things. do make sure I do though, is I really like to make something for the Christmas ta table. So whether I use my Cricut machine to like make name, um, place names or things like that, I do try and do that. But that's about my limit um, in terms of Christmas makes at the moment. <laughs> I, think, I like a bit of fruity booze, so I will be going foraging. Like black uh, blackberries are out now, so we'll be putting some of that in some vodka and hiding that away and those sorts of things. <laughs> I think there's there's project management. What I find is like so we've got a uh, an advent calendar for the girls that's got like twenty four pockets, mm. and the advent fairies become more and more creative over time. Like we've got a jigsaw that's got twenty four pieces. It's like a a nativity thing so every day the advent fairy drops a couple of coins bit of that but more recently she's been doing lego minifigures she's becoming more arduous but i have like i keep looking now is the time to buy the lego minifigure bundles of them so yes. that they can be dropped in and stuff like that so i think the creativity for me isn't necessarily what you would expect in terms of stitching and making and stuff but still mm -hmm. you get these little ideas like i quite like do you know the, the very hungry caterpillar eric carl yeah. And that style where he made cut out things of painted paper and stuff like that. 
So yeah. sometimes if the girls are doing a bit of painting, what I'll do is I'll just paint some random things on bits of paper and then let them dry and stack them away so that later on I can cut letters out of them and bang them over the house for Christmas and stuff. So oh, cute. Like, that's really nice. That's clever. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's clever. Really Not just a pretty face, this guy. <laughs> I think as, as I have, as I've got older, speaking as the, the oldest person here, um, I, I do feel that, that life is too short to make something you don't want to make. Mm -hmm. And so I don't now, if I, I don't ever feel that, oh, I should make this or I should make that. I mm -hmm. just make the things I want to make. Mm -hmm. And so, and if I want to make something for a gift or I want to make something, then that's fine. But I think a lot of people end up in this really hard situation where they feel that they've got to make something for someone. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a horrible situation to be in because then you're resentful as you're crocheting or you're knitting or you're painting or you're stitching. And so, yeah, these days I only ever make things that I really want to make. Yeah. That's the trade off between when you make turn your hobby into a job as well, isn't it? Because then you have to do it for no fun sort of. And yeah. I suppose it takes a lot of nerve to reset these things. Like sometimes I'll say to people, and I know people that will be stitching Christmas cards now, and I'll say to them, maybe you just need to have a year off. A year where you disappoint everybody and then you can come back with really small items and start it all again. Because, yeah, the expectation, yeah. Mm. It's, a, it's a big manacle around your ankle. Yeah. Yeah, and we, we just got to remember that we, we do these things because we enjoy them and so, to not turn them into a stress. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. Can I, I offer my one of my big plans this year, and this is based on the Francis Quinn because we'll be interviewing Frances Quinn on the Lovecraft show. And so I got her cookbook and Mary and tuned me into, it's a recipe. And what you get is you get giant chocolate buttons and you put them on a baking tray, lined baking tray, warm them in the oven so they go a little bit soft. And then in each one you put a pretzel and then you let them cool off so that they become chocolatey, salty pretzel treats. And that's, that's a real amazing. quick win. But I reckon bags yeah. of those in that confectioner's plastic to people Oh yeah, Christmas is done. And actually, yeah. I think last year I did that, and I did it in like kilner jars. I just filled them up with those little chocolatey pretzel buttons can and put a imagine? Christmassy ribbon on. It's just amazing. You can just do that. And actually, on the food front, the other thing I always do at Christmas because I love doing it is doing um, sort of like a meringue coated sort of almonds, where you it's it's a, or or pecans actually. So you just sort of soak the pecans in a bit of orange juice and sugar. And then you make a little meringue in your mixer and then you combine all that together, spread it all out on a baking tray and put it in the oven. And when it comes out, you sort of smash it all up and it's just the most delicious orange scented meringue covered pecan nuts. Again, goes into a little jar with an arm with a ribbon. Yeah. So you can do these things that are really low effort. I mean that's mm. medium effort that one, but um, it's. Uh, I mean that sounded quite that sounded complicated to me, but I'm not very good in the kitchen, so. But any of those sorts of things, I think, yeah. if you don't, if you have a Christmas year when you don't feel up to knitting everybody's socks, I mean, if you're a really prolific maker, that's great, and you love just churning them things out. And wonderful, that's absolutely delightful. But if you're worried about the effect of like, oh, goodness me, I have to make 10 hats or, God forbid, five Christmas jumpers. I think the incredible grannies across the UK that make Christmas jumpers mm -hmm. for the whole family, that if, if you're not one of those people, you know, go pretzel, I say. Yeah. yeah, it's a good reset, isn't it? But then do you, so following on from that, do you then around the time of Christmas, you're working on spring crafts? Is that one too much of a head spin or do you actually yeah, have no. to get Christmas over and done with? No, no. I think what happens for the natural crafter, she says, putting her hand on her just the natural crafter. <laughs> I think, for some of you living in my world anyway, I think what most people do, and certainly at Love Crafts, this is what we've seen, is that most people will make furiously up to Christmas. Oh, and I'm not just saying Christmas either, with Hanukkah, Diwali, any of these sort of winter festivities. Yeah. Gifts, 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 gifts. And then they get to Christmas Day and then they come to a huge stop. And then maybe on Boxing Day, they might cast on a jumper for themselves or make themselves something. And, and in January, that's the time 
where people are right, I'm not going to make for anybody else anymore. I'm just going to make for me. And yeah. that's what they do. I think that's what they do. And it's really a lovely time because it, it's cold outside. You can sit inside. I'm talking about yarn crafts because that's my favourite. But I think that's when people actually stop and go, right, I'm going to make something for me now. Yeah, definitely. And you know what I find with my with my channel, um, because obviously you can look at the analytics of when people are watching and things, and um, the views go right down like the week before Christmas, and literally Christmas evening, <laughs> like the evening, <laughs> that yeah. evening it's like boof straight up. The views just go wild again. It's it's yeah. crazy because everyone's like, okay, that's my job done. Time for me. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure that there is that, that steady climb for the uh, Christmas apple cosy crochet pattern. The sort of anything that could cover a chocolate orange goes right up <laughs> yeah. to Christmas Eve. And then after Christmas Eve, <laughs> nobody, yeah. wants to know. nobody wants I've to cover. I've never made one of those. Never oh, made one of those. And I've I never mean... made socks either. In fact, that's a, that's a slip, little fib because I have crocheted some for when we did the Crochet Society boxes. But other than that... As a personal project, I've never done, um, never done socks. Have you ever done the toilet roll cover that's a doll on the top half? Jane. That needs a revival, doesn't it? No, what's wrong with that? I feel like that's everything. Everything is wrong with that. They need no. They need bringing back for the twenty first century. Why can't it? My be motto the is drag race version? just because you can crochet it doesn't mean you should. <laughs> so, when I was little, we, my auntie Wendy had. Uh, one of those soda stream things that no, like like a soda water canister. So soda siphon. Soda siphon. Yeah. That's the word. And it was a, it had on it a crocheted poodle costume. So it's like it had like the bottle part had the sort of crocheted bottom, and then it had a poodle head. I thought that was just the best thing in the world. But nobody Something has about... a soda siphon anymore. One of those and a jar full of peacock feathers. For some reason, like that's like classic seventies. <laughs> <laughs> like interior decor i think that i don't understand why there's a brilliant book called julian is a mermaid it's a kid's book about a little boy who likes dressing up as a mermaid and he's kind of like puts all feathers in his hair and stuff like that and i feel like those kind of those are the toilet roll holder dolls that we need for the 21st century right mm, yeah i'm gonna go i'm gonna go and make one now mm. see you later. <laughs> <laughs> back again don't know how to crochet. <laughs> well, I've got plenty of tutorials on my channel yeah. if you want to I know. Learn. You, you, you know that. Right. You know it's got to start somewhere. Do you know there's a shop not far from me called Mermaid Dreams? And it's got everything mermaid in it. I mean, what sort of genius is that? Genius. That's that's very niche, isn't it? Mm, yeah. But mm. people like every mermaid. young child every walks past that and it's like, wow. Yeah. Let's go in. Yeah. What do they sell? Just, you know, like. Every different sort of size of fishtail, you know. And but do they do the other one where it's the legs of a lady and the head of a fish, or is that just not the popular mermaid these days? No, that's really not a very popular mermaid. No, funny that. <laughs> um, no, it's um, they just have everything iridescent, mm. which were then obviously became hijacked to be unicorn. But in the first instance, all of those iridescent things were mermaids, a lot of sequins, uh, fishtails, and and you know probably wigs. But it's like for grown-ups and children, so it's a lot of mermaid stuff. Wow. What's your relationship with mermaids and unicorns these days, Sarah? Uh, Ella does have a mermaid tail. It's a proper, it's so impressive. It's a proper, um, f it's like got a proper flipper. So she mm. actually can put her feet in it and it's actually designed to swim like with it. I mean, obviously I won't because one, she can't swim. <laughs> and two, that would be very dangerous. But, um, you know, for people who can swim and they want these mermaid tails, you can actually use them as a flipper. But yeah, everything is mermaids and and unicorns and sequins and I love it. <laughs> it's fab. There are actually mermaid swimming clubs, aren't there? I've seen uh, on Instagram. There? there are people yeah. that like you know, grown grown people, adults let's call them, members, <laughs> 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 uh, male and female, mermen as well as uh, mermaids, who sort of you know take over a pool for an evening and have a sort of a weekly swim with their mermaid tails on or their merman tails. 
I mean, I'm I'm quite like the seal in that I'm a lot nimbler underwater than I am on land. So I feel like maybe I should go to one of those groups. Oh, come on, be a, be a merman. Be a merman. Be a merman. Do it. It's easier than being a man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. I do love our chats. We've we've gone how did we end up talking about mermaids and mermen? <laughs> right, right, all my fault, all my fault, I <laughs> So can you tell me, have you got anything exciting coming up that we can look out for over the latter part of this year or anytime soon? Well, I think uh we're mostly excited with the launch of the new season, season three of the Lovecraft show. Mm. And we have got some corkers of guests coming up. Uh, no, no surprises that you're one. Of them. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, we're excited yeah. because we haven't had a, a season for a while, uh, but we've been mm. doing a lot of work behind the scenes, haven't we, Jamie? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. We've got some interesting lineups. I think. Uh, so the first season we had like twenty interviews, was it? And the second season we had slightly less. And now this time around, we're going to have. 10 episodes that will come out over a five month season so it'll be one every two weeks and it's going to be good it's going to be good fun to get back into the groove because I think we both missed it and we had some great chats last time and that's the thing is they just go completely random don't they so we start off in one place and we end up in another and I think looking at some of the guests we've got lined up this time around I mean if we get all the guests that we've got in mind then it's going to be interstellar and I've already oh, yeah. said too much or he said too much. Don't say any more than that. Baby. It could be cosmic. <laughs> I have to tell you, just as a sort of to build craft into the podcast, we, um, Jamie and I went to the podcast show, which uh, it was at Islington. Um, and Jamie thought, and it was a marvelously brilliant idea, as all of his ideas are, to take with us a QR code uh, that, that for the podcast. Uh, to the Lovecraft show that was cross-stitched and so we had these lovely um, handful of little baby hoops with the QR codes for the cross-stitched uh, cross onto uh, Calico and we t we walked around the Lovecraft show, uh, their podcast show giving them to people and they were just staggered weren't they Jamie they loved mm. them that yeah, because they did work. I was just wondering if I still had one around. Because, you know, cross-stitch is pixels, tiny little yeah. squares, and QR codes are pixels. So the two things go hand in hand. So basically, yeah, we had this little wooden hoop, and then the design was stitched on it. And if you bleeped it with your phone, it would take you to the second episode that we had with Tom Daly. And then there was this, do you want to do the anecdote about the guy in the boiler suit? <laughs> oh, we were just about to go and talk to somebody at Spotify. And the Spotify sort of stand was... Uh, just at the bottom by the stairs in the uh, in the podcast hall and there was this guy standing outside who had this fantastic pink boiler suit on absolutely amazing and Jamie said to me because he's a chicken those people, <laughs> those people look really cool go and see if you can see where they're from on their lanyards so I was but captivated by this guy's boiler suit because it was so right. great and it was pink and he looked and he had amazing a man and so as I walked towards the Spotify stand, which had a few stairs going up, Jamie went and hid behind a pillar to watch from behind <laughs> the pillar. And as I went along to try and ask this, to sort of spot what was on the lanyard, I was so captivated by the boiler suit that I tripped up the stairs. And the man in the boiler suit had to catch me as I nearly fell over <sighs> flat on my face. Oh, and I had to say to him, I'm so sorry. I love your boiler suit so much. Uh, I wasn't focused and I, I fell over walking to the Spotify thing and he said, you're the woman with the cross-stitched QR codes. Because I oh. had to hand it to my... So actually, we, we did manage to make quite a splash. Um, yeah, we only gave a few away, but evidently they went <laughs> mildly viral yeah. inside the building. We went out going... Ooh, okay. <laughs> quite bizarre. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't oh, yeah. chicken. You were, you were, you hid behind a pillar. You got, you I did. I hid behind a pillar, and then when Marion tripped over, I was like, oh, well done, Marion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I love you too. Just <laughs> awesome to listen to. I'm like, my cheeks are hurting from smiling at you yeah. so much. Can you tell everybody where they can come and listen to you? Because everybody needs to hear more of you too. Thank you very much. Jamie. Oh, you do it. Oh. Uh... <laughs> Love, you can, love you can, forward slash show. 
Well, you can look on any of your favourite podcast mm. platforms for the oh, love yeah, podcast show. So, so we're on Spotify, well, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, you know. Subscribe any... to the Lovecraft Show wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs> and if you Lovecraft like Lovecraft. us, leave a review once you've left a review for Sarah Jane's podcast first. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. Leave a, leave a review for Sarah Jane first to say she's marvellous because we love her. <laughs> and then come and listen to the Lovecraft Show. <laughs> yeah, we're on we're on everything, really. Um, you can find us on the Lovecraft's website, but you're you're probably best off going straight. No, no, I mustn't say that. You're best off. I can say it. You can go and yeah, just wherever you get your podcast, look up Lovecraft. Be careful for the HP Lovecraft stuff because obviously that's quite different. But you'll find us. We've mostly got orange labels on our, our podcast, and <laughs> yeah, yeah we're there. So, yeah. And then you can find me at mrxstitch.com and you can find my magazine at xstitchmag.com and you can find Marion at lovecrafts.com and wherever all Lovecraft. good Marions can be found. <laughs> Love YouTube channel, we're there as well. Fab. I'll leave all the links in the description box below anyway so that we everyone can go and check you out. But thank you so much for joining me on the Yarn Over podcast. It's been a pleasure. Thank I you. knew it would be. <laughs> we <laughs> <You> survived. <laughs> All right. Take care. See you soon. Bye. Bye.